Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I do my best to get back to your comments and your questions here on my YouTube channel. And I really love all the contributions, the questions, the comments. Again, you name it. I really appreciate the feedback. This channel wouldn't exist without you, so thank you for your interest in my content. Now, I oftentimes will see certain comments and make videos in, re in response to them, and I'm not going to name any names in this video, but I will say that I got a good question the other day from someone about learning and what my preferred method of uh, obtaining new knowledge actually is. And I've, over the years, kind of developed my own system for learning. I do not go to public, I didn't, excuse me. Uh, in junior college, I dropped out, looks like my camera's trying to focus. In junior college, I experienced Kundalini and I'm not going to get into that in this video. I've talked about that in a handful of my other videos, but my Kundalini experiences allowed me to obtain some pieces of um, occult information, esoteric information, and that information and the experience that I went through, basically my consciousness was heightened and I was allowed to see past the limitations of my programmed senses. I was able to see into the various uh, subtle organizing energy field layers of my physical body. I hope that makes sense. Basically, we all have auras and different uh, electromagnetic fields around our bodies that we can't see because our eyes have been conditioned and we are malnourished and our senses are conditioned. Our sub it, essentially, it's all subconscious programming why we can't see past our limitations. But uh, I was given a download of information and pretty much overnight, I dropped out of school after I experienced the experience. I had a handful of Kundalini experiences in my early 20s, and uh, they changed my life forever. The Kundalini energy came into my life, showed me some things, and then kind of subsided. And uh, it's taught me a handful of things. That's a subject for another video, but it's kind of relative because the Kundalini essentially showed me that I was give, putting my time into things that weren't what I truly wanted. And I think many of us have this problem. And I think many, that's why many people are unsatisfied in life. It's because you, you're going about chasing uh, a dream that isn't actually your dream. Our parents mold us with their opinions. No you know, judgment to them, but it's true. Our childhood teachers and family friends and our friends in general, there's a handful of different forces that whether, you know, that mold our minds. Let's just put it that way. And because our minds at a young age are very impressionable to friends and family and our parents and teachers, you name it, we often give in to the fear that comes from those sources and we contribute. I'm trying to put something into words that I'm having difficulty putting into words. So let me rephrase this, ladies and gentlemen. Basically at a young age, we, were, we received information from a handful of different sources and whether it was the intention of those sources to program us or not, doesn't matter because those sources contributed to our programming and I'm sure we contributed to other people's programming as well. It's not like we're just victims. We're, we're an integral part in all of this, ladies and gentlemen. But because we receive a lot of bogus bullshit information at a young age, we take that information and allow it to mold belief systems. And the language of the subconscious is symbolism and belief. And when we give our subconscious mind belief systems and we believe it with every fiber of our being, our subconscious mind through the law of attraction seeks to actually create those a reality based on the beliefs that we feed it. It executes commands like a computer. So at a young age, you were pretty much taught by your teachers that if you don't listen, you're not going to get good grades. And if you don't get good grades, you're not going to amount to much and you might end up being homeless. The TV solidified these beliefs in the entire school system, ladies and gentlemen, especially in the early 1900s. That's when it really started to be used to program people. But the entire school system is designed to keep you in a very low bandwidth of energy of consciousness. Schools could actually be used as mystery schools. And, you know, I'll discuss what mystery schools are in an upcoming video, but schools could essentially be used to produce enlightened individuals. Schools are designed to keep you in a 
slave consciousness, ladies and gentlemen. You see, I say slave consciousness because you've been taught to actually experience reality through the context of the most minute amount of your potential. We can actually experience enlightenment. We can become enlightened. We can achieve miracles. We can do things that most people consider are impossible, but you've been taught to operate on the lowest bandwidth of your potential and think that, hey, everything's honky-dory. This is great. We've been duped. We've been conned. We've been hoodwinked. We've been tricked. And more and more people are beginning to realize this, and more and more people are beginning to resist the control. And as we resist the control... The system overlords are putting the pedal to the metal, so to speak, ladies and gentlemen. So let me try to... Is that better? That's almost two. We'll just have to deal with this obnoxious lighting right now. Now, what does this all have to do with the question that someone asked me recently? Well, it has to do with the fact that the Kundalini showed me that I had given a lot of time and energy and effort into trying to make the whole school thing work for me. I would stay up late worrying about my grades. I was tr constantly trying to juggle six to seven different you know, subjects at once, math, science, social studies, or history. All this shit was occupying all of my time. And as I went and practiced, as I became privy to this, and I always knew school there was something wrong with it, but in my early 20s, I really started practicing self-induced hypnosis, and I went back into repressed aspects of my mind, and I saw that the school system was largely why I stopped actually feeling that childhood sense of awe that we feel when we're young. You see, most of you probably remember, but some of you may have forgotten because that's how the system works. It makes you forget the magic of life and it replaces life with just like this stale consciousness. We'll get into that in the near future. But ladies and gentlemen, let's, uh, I thought I had the wand nearby, but I would go back into my mind through self-induced states of hypnosis, which I'm not going to discuss in this video, but I saw that the school system was really why a lot of my stress and worry in life was manifesting because I was trying to make something work that I didn't really agree with. You see, I didn't enjoy school. I didn't like being told what I had to learn. I had something, I had things that I wanted to learn. And that's why I would bring books to school, my own books. And, you know, when, when we were supposed to be opening our textbooks, in class, I would open my textbook and then inside the textbook, I would place my smaller book of whatever subject I wanted to learn inside the book and I would read that. I mean, in high school, I was reading about the, the, the third eye. That's when I really started becoming interested in the occult. I had always been interested in the occult, however, because I remember begging my grandmother when I was just a little boy to take me to the bookstore and buy me spell books and whatnot. And she would do it. Sometimes I've God rest her soul, but I would drive her crazy just so she would take me to the bookstore so I could get these books. Cause I wanted the information that bad. I was willing to disrupt my grandmother's peace so that I could get those bits of information. But, um, where was I going with this ladies and gentlemen? We were discussing the school system, but uh, the Kundalini showed me that, I mean, I don't want to make this a whole rant about school, but um, in my early 20s, that's when I really developed the courage after my first Kundalini experience. It's like I was trying to make school work not for me. Like I wanted to make my parents happy. I wanted to potentially have like credentials that I could use to attract a partner and just all this nonsense. But after my first Kundalini experience, it's like, wait a second, this is stupid. I'm actually funning, funneling in all of my energy, time, and effort into this school thing when I don't even really agree with it. And, you know, like, I was going to bring up the whole ADHD thing because by the system standards, I do have ADHD. But I think that's just a fancy term for children who just kind of are rejecting the, the programming of school. 
you know, I don't think it's natural to sit in chairs for eight hours a day in rows under artificial fluorescent lighting, being told what we need to believe by people that we don't even really know. It's like our parents tell us not to believe, to talk to strangers or anything like that, but we'll willingly go into schools and be taught how to think basically by people that we don't really even know. It's a very strange world we live in. This is absolutely a Twilight Zone episode, and I'm glad because I just said that, that I have my camera recording in black and white. I love those old Twilight Zone episodes, those black and white episodes. Those are great, ladies and gentlemen. Go back and watch those if you haven't already done so. I like to give curriculum and book recommendations and even homework on, on this channel. And I can tell you that if you want some good material to start watching, um, you know, get rid of the cable television and just watch things on a computer and start streaming um, the black and white uh, Twilight Zones. Another great movie is uh, The Dark City. Many people haven't seen that. I think it's it's either Dark City or The Dark City. It's the movie with Kiefer Sutherland in it. Uh, that is an awesome, awesome movie and sheds a lot of light on certain things that I believe are happening here in this world. But uh, anyways, folks, ADHD is just another fancy term for, you know, attention deficit hyperactive disorder. But to me, it's attention dialed into higher dimensions. <laughs> Excuse me. But I'm going to stop ranting about uh, all this kind of stuff about school and whatnot and get to the question that was asked. And the question was something along the lines of, what do you do to study? How do you uh, acquire information? This person was uh, said that he or she was impressed with my amount of knowledge and uh, wanted to know how I go about learning things and applying what I learned in my life. And to be honest, you guys, I learned this in my early 20s after my first Kundalini experience because at the time I was playing a lot of video games. I was doing a lot of things in my life then that I don't do now. But regardless, you know, I was playing a lot of video games on my computer. And after my first Kundalini experience, I became obsessed with the desire for wisdom. I became obsessed with trying to learn things that we that had been hidden from us, occult information and occult, O-C-C-U-L-T, not cult, C-U-L-T, but occult information, uh, is information or wisdom that has been hidden. And I wanted to know everything that was hidden from me. I felt like after my first Kundalini experience, I had taken my first breath of real air in my first life, or in my life, metaphorically speaking, and the what I experienced gave me a thirst for desiring wisdom that is still to this day absolutely inquenchable. I it is irresistible and I thirst for wisdom, I thirst for knowledge with every fiber of my being and that's the first step. Once you have that desire for learn learning and acquiring wisdom, it's a matter of learning how to multitask because we live in a world folks where my cat always when I start doing something starts meowing and trying to take me or distract me. I thank my cat. I don't know if you guys can hear it or hear her through the door. She's meowing, but it's like, okay, I'm, she's teaching me whether she knows it or not how to focus. So that's a great thing. Multitasking, learning how to do more than one thing at once. That's really what's going to help you with acquiring wisdom and acquiring knowledge and learning because, excuse me, we live in a world where there's a lot of obligations. We've made a lot of contracts with the matrix. We've signed ourselves into obligations. That's what a contract is essentially. We have certain things that we have to do. We have to put energy into certain things here in this material world so that we can pay the rent, so that we can afford clothing and food. We just live in a world dominated by resources and to obtain resources to pay for things. We have to give our time and put our effort into the certain things that we may or may not want to do. So, now that we've got that out of the way and we understand that we have to put our time into multiple things here in this world, then comes in maximizing your time when you do have free time. And here's how I did it. I was going through junior college. I dropped out. I was working a lifeguarding job at the time and on my, I would go to work and I would bring books to work and I would read on my break. My boss was pretty cool at the time. And if there weren't big, I worked at this pool where for a, a pretty long periods of time, the, the, excuse me, for periods of time, there would be a lot of people showing up 
and then uh, people would kind of slow down. And when there weren't a lot of people there, I could put put on a radio, um, and I would put like educational. I would put on audio books. All right, ladies and gentlemen, my camera cut off, but what I was getting at is. You have to learn how to multitask. You have to learn how to kill multiple birds with one stone. Or as someone has left, someone left a comment once on my channel that was like feed multiple birds with one seed. I kind of liked that. But so what, what I do is, you know, I, I, if I'm driving somewhere, I have a, a lecture on through my Bluetooth device in my car. I'm listening to audiobooks. I'm listening to lectures on YouTube. If I am cleaning stuff around the house, if I'm doing laundry, if I'm mopping the floor, if I'm even laying in bed, I'm reading. Or again, I'm listening to an audiobook if I'm on my feet. If I'm, I go on a walk every day for about 30 minutes to an hour, the entire time, nine times out of 10, if I'm not making a video, I have my phone and I'm listening to lectures on YouTube and online. I'm listening to audiobooks. I am constantly doing multiple things with my time, but the, you know, the, the fabric of what I'm doing, whenever I have free time, I'm, I'm listening to some form of, um, educational material, ladies and gentlemen, that's just what I do. On top of that, I'm coupling that with good nutrition and quality exercise and adequate sun so that I can do my best to retain all the information. I'm taking reishi mushroom and things like that. So, uh, again, you, you know, here's the thing too. People say, do you read? I absolutely do read, but I only read if I can't, if I can't have access to the audiobook version or if I'm laying in bed and, uh, you know, you know, before I go to bed, I'm not going to be listening to an audiobook unless I have my headphones, but usually I try to read before bed because it helps me go to sleep and helps me stay asleep longer. So when I'm laying in bed, sometimes I'll listen to an audiobook with my headphones, but I have a tendency to fall asleep with the earbuds on and then I wake up in the middle of the book and I can't find where I left off. So I'll read and I'm currently I'm reading a book on metabolism and the thyroid and healing your thyroid, which is really interesting. Uh, an interesting book for those who are interested in the thyroid and hypothyroidism is just a brief note here is a book called, um, I think it's called How to Heal Your Metabolism by Kate Deering. And then there's another book called Hypothyroidism. That's an older book by uh, Broda Barnes, I think. Again, I hope that was, I think the name of the book, let me look it up really quick because this is a pretty interesting book if, if you're interested in learning about this stuff, ladies and gentlemen. But the, the, the moral of the story and what I'm trying to convey here is that you want to always... Uh, you want to always, when you have free time, if you're alone and you're not with other people, do the things that you're doing, such as washing dishes or doing laundry, folding clothes, mopping the floor, walking the dogs, walking on the treadmill, cooking food. Listen to something, some form of educational material. So when, when I was younger, when in my early 20s, after my first Kundalini experience, I would literally play video games. I'm not, I'm not very proud of this later on in life, but I would play video games for like six to eight hours, sometimes a night on the weekends. But the one thing that I was doing amongst all that is I was listening to lectures um, while I was doing that. Yes, it's, it's called How to Heal Your Metabolism, ladies and gentlemen. And that is uh, by... Kate Deering, How to Heal Your Metabolism, Learn How the Right Foods, Sleep, and Right Amount of Exercise, um, and Happiness Can Increase Your Metabolic Rate and Help Heal Your Broken Metabolism. Excuse me. Interesting book. Another book that I plan on reading next is a book called Red Light Therapy, which, who is this one by? Ari Witten. And then the other book I was just telling you about um, by Broda Barnes is uh, hypothyroidism, the unsuspected illness. The thyroid, I find really, really interesting. Metabolism as well. The thyroid is a butterfly shaped gland within the neck region and it helps regulate um, so many different things. It's a master gland. We'll talk more about the thyroid in the near future. I think that a Damaged thyroid is a large contributing factor why so many people have so many health-related issues. But uh, 
you know, I mean, some of these books, unfortunately, that I, I, you know, you can't get in audio format. Hopefully that'll change soon. And those are the types of books that I'll read when I am laying in bed. Generally speaking, though, um, the majority of learning that I do now is through audio. Uh, it's not like, like you could essentially sit down and watch these like on YouTube. You can go on and find like uh, like the Dr. Rhonda Patrick lectures or um, there's a handful of different people that I like to watch and learn information from. And you could sit there and watch them talk. But to me, that's kind of a waste of time because, you know, spending too much time near the computer for one isn't all that great. And staring at the light is going to dry your eyes out and it's going to expose you to a bunch of unnatural blue light. So what I'll do is I'll take my Bluetooth speaker that's uh, really dirty right now because I'm constantly taking it outside and gardening with it. It looks pretty gross. But uh, this is the Unz Angle. Uh, what model is this? It's an Unz Angle Bluetooth speaker that's hooked up to my laptop because the laptop speakers aren't loud enough. And I hook this thing up and I take it with me as long as it's in range of my computer to whatever room that I'm doing work in. And uh, I will, you know, take advantage of killing multiple birds with one stone. I'm cleaning the floor while I'm learning. Now, obviously, it's a little bit more difficult when you're working because oftentimes, unless you have some freelance work or you're in kind of construction and demolition field, um, you know, I do a lot of freelance work. I, work, I do stuff. I, I make money from home. I make money doing yard work. I do money doing, I make money doing grunt work and I do freelance work. And because I do freelance work, I have a little bit more freedom to do certain things. Like if I'm going to uh, do a bunch of yard work at someone's house and they employ and they hire me, usually if I ask them, Hey, do you mind if I listen to the radio? They say, no problem. Listen to whatever you want. So I'll bring my phone and I'll load it full of lectures. And there's various programs that you can do to do this, or you can just stream YouTube through your phone and I'll hook it up to my Bluetooth and I'll sit there and I'll do weeding or planting stuff, planting things while I'm learning. It's all about multitasking, ladies and gentlemen. That is the, the goal of today or this lecture today is to say that if you're interested in learning, realize that you probably have a lot of obligations you have to look at the obligations that you have and look at where you're going to have free time to settle aside for studies. I like to do, I like to read for at least about 30 minutes a day. Usually it's longer. I like to read, but that's usually while I'm laying in bed. Now, when I do have free time throughout the day, I'm doing my best to study for at least an hour. When I was younger, I had a lot more free time because I didn't have as many obligations and I didn't have as much stress on the weekends. Sometimes I would spend 16 hours a day studying, listening to things and absorbing information while I was playing video games. And I obtained, I, I actually withheld or held on to a lot of that information, believe it or not. So, I mean, if you have certain, if you do certain things like play video games, you're not really getting much out of those, but you could get a lot more out of them if you listened to some lectures and did some multitasking. I love to learn as well while I walk, but sometimes I like when I go on my nature walk, I don't like to have anything on and I just like to listen to the sounds of nature because here in Virginia, there's all sorts of birds. This hearing the wind pass through the trees. You've got to learn to learn from nature as well, ladies and gentlemen. It's not just about hacking into the internet and listening to a bunch of lectures and whatnot. There's wisdom outside of intellectual wisdom. There's wisdom outside of book knowledge is what I'm getting at. You've got to learn to give yourself time amongst all this too, to let everything set. You know, they say that only a small percentage of what you actually listen to or read is takes or is retained. And that's why, you know, in my opinion, you can retain a lot more if you're a healthy individual, if you're making sure to consume adequate levels of fat and protein and carbohydrates, enough sugars and whatnot, you're going to be healthier and you're going to retain for more information because your body's going to be working more efficiently and uh, you name it. So that was kind of a long discussion to simply, I could have answered this in a very direct way, but I like doing the longer rants to, to, to Matt, to learn or to retain a lot of information you have to, or to learn to blah, 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 to learn a lot of things on your own 
which is what I do. I don't go to a school or any of this other nonsense. I teach myself what I want to learn based on my heart's desires. And my heart always leads me in the right direction. And my desire in life to, is to uncover the truth that's been hidden because nine times out of 10, the truth that has been hidden from us is very important information. Hence why it's hidden in the first place. The overlords don't want you to see it. You have to learn to maximize your time and use your time wisely by multitasking and learning to enjoy it. You know, if, if you sit, if you set 30 minutes uh, aside a, a night or a day to do uh, reading and you hate it the whole time, you're just going to be angry and you're going to produce a bunch of stress and you're not going to even retain the information. You've got to learn to enjoy what it is you do. And in my opinion, there is no, nothing more satisfying than thirsting for wisdom and finally just biting down on that truth, on that fruit of wisdom. That's a metaphor for actually obtaining the wisdom through studying. And you can learn so much on the internet. You can learn so much in books, but it might be difficult for you if you've got to go to work and you've got to go to school and you've managing all these online courses and you have the kids running around, you've got to learn to really de-stress break apart or break away from the things in your life that are unnecessary break apart and learn to manage your life more effectively because if you can just whittle out all the unnecessary things that are happening or taking place in your life that don't really need to be there that are just contributing more stress that's going to naturally by default give you more free time and free time is essential if you want to learn and that's why the matrix seeks to fill you full of obligations and take away all your free time and replace it with stress because when you're stressed you're not going to have time patience or the desire to actually learn things when you're stressed, you're constantly going to be worried about mitigating the stress, whether that be, oh, I've got to, you know, do this to get the pay, the bills paid and all this other nonsense. They've got us trapped, but with learning wisdom, with obtaining knowledge, you can learn things so that you can actually get out of this prison system and have the life that you desire where you have free time. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to wrap this one up. I love you. Thank you for, thank you for watching this video. If you're interested in supporting my broadcast, this is a listener based free tool or excuse me. This is a free educational tool that I have put together and it is listener supported. So if you're interested in supporting my channel outside of just watching these, which these videos will always be free, but if you're interested in supporting me financially and funneling some money into my operation, if you're interested in uh, donating, donating to my cause and uh, helping put some food on my table or keep the lights on around here. You can do so by accessing the links below in the description box. There's a handful of different links. And if for some reason you can't find them, just shoot me a message here or a comment, excuse me, on YouTube. And I will happily support or supply you. I can't speak with the links. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for watching. I love you all. I hope this video wasn't too boring. And until next time, peace be with you.